Hi everyone, uh, my name is Fargo and I'm an undergrad studying chemistry with AI in Dublin City University. Uh, this is my presentation to Blue Cycon 2024. It's about the project I was involved in this summer. It's called the classification of carbonaceous meteorites using machine learning. The aim of this project is to use machine learning techniques on data from FT ICOR mass spectrometry on carbonaceous chondrites to investigate their role in the beginning or the advancement of life on Earth. Mass spectrometry is a precise technique. It's used to get the mass to charge ratio of ions using magnetic fields. There's a photo on the right hand side of this slide that shows the large FT ICOR mass spectrometer in the Florida National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. That's the specific machine that we got our data for this project from. A chondrite is a type of meteorite that's non-metallic and it's the most common type. A carbonaceous chondrite is one that has carbon compounds in it. The project was initially split into a number of different data vis visualization diagrams, such as Van Crivelin mass defect or DPE versus carbon count plots. Personally, I was responsible for the DBE versus carbon count plots. Machine learning is then used on those transformed data sets to analyze them further and to gain insights into them. The DBE of a molecule is its double bond equivalent. It's a measure of how saturated a carbon compound is. It's equated to the number of H2 molecules that are needed to saturate a molecule or convert all cyclic structures to acyclic ones. When plotted against the carbon count, it gives us a good idea of how linear and saturated a carbon-based molecule is. Specific molecules that are essential to life will fall in certain ranges on this plot. A good example of a DBE versus carbon count plot is the topmost diagram. In order to group or cluster the diagram into regions that are more similar to each other, I used k-means. This method splits the data into a number of groups given by k. It then checks the data points in each group for how similar they are to each other and to the other groups, and then regroups them accordingly. This continues until all the groups are composed of the most similar data points to each other. You can determine the optimal number of clusters to use by making an elbow curve, curve plot. There's an example on the bottom left of this. Uh, this is found by calculating the sum of the square distance between points in a cluster and the center of the cluster or centroid. When you plot those values against each value of k, or the number of clusters, you can generally see a point at which there's the biggest bend. This is the elbow point. In this example, the elbow point looks to be between k equals 2 and k equals 4, so a value of k equals 3 was used. A graphical representation of the k-means clustering with k equal to 3 is in the bottom right diagram. There are many conclusions that could be drawn from further research in this topic. For example, for the DBE versus carbon count, clusters being positioned in the same place for a majority of meteorites could imply a similar chemical composition. Comparison with plots using data from matter from Earth could also highlight any obvious similarities or differences between them. In conjunction with the research of the rest of the group, we could get key insights into how meteorites could have factored into the origins or the development of life on Earth. And that's the end of my presentation. I'd just like to acknowledge and give credit to everyone involved in this project, specifically Jim Cleves, Anna Rudd Prabhu, Sidan Sharma and Huan Chen for their roles leading the project. I'd also like to acknowledge all of my groupmates and everyone who's running the Blue Marble Space Young Scientist Programme for all their help. Thank you.